Hey guys, Zach from 7th Hour Films back again with Doctor Who. Last time on Doctor Who, we had the pilot uh, where we met uh, a young girl named Bill and she was sort of attending a university, not officially, but uh, she was sneaking into lectures, specifically the doctor's lectures, uh, because the doctor had been teaching at a university for like, some people say 75 years. And uh, everyone loved his lectures, and she snuck in, even though she wasn't a student. And uh, she had this, uh, she had this a uh, friend slash romantic interest, uh, a girl with a star in her eye, which was uh, actually really really cool. I kind of wish I had a star in my eye. Like that, that just sounds like cool, like diachromatic eyes. Like oh, that'd just be awesome. Anyway, not the point. Um, but yeah, she was, uh, absorbed by a intergalactic oil spill, and, uh, then she was chasing Bill, uh, throughout time and space once the Doctor was able to, uh, get involved, and they started the runaway, and then eventually, uh, they realized, like, oh, she just needs to let Bill go, and then she did, and then the Doctor was like, okay, now just, I'm gonna make you forget everything you've seen, but he doesn't, and then he's like, uh, I don't want to take another companion, but uh, fine, I will. And so now he has taken Bill as his new companion, and also Nardole was there. Um, that was pretty much it. It was a great first episode, and I'm excited to see where we are going in this one. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into this episode of Doctor Who. Here we go. What's the theory, Will? Well, you don't steer the TARDIS. Yeah. You negotiate with him. Yeah. <laughs> that is a very Still good point. point between... You're not supposed to go off-world unless it's an emergency. I'm not off-world. Are you going off-world? I'm going back to my office. Could you put the kettle on, please? Mm -hmm. Future. Okay, good choice. It's what people normally go for. Why? Why do you think? I want to see if he's happy. Well... Oh. Wow, that was a good guess. Mom is dead. Sorry. Smile, smile, smile. Um. That's not even funny. No, it's not a joke. Mom is dead. Uh, wait. Is Do dead. you need to keep the smiles up? I'm grinning like an idiot. Smile, really. Uh, Try. Keep smiling. Don't. No, no. Jesus. Yeah. Oh god. Just keep smiling. Well, it depends upon what aspect of your language has survived over so many thousands of years. Emoji! It speaks emoji! Of course it does. Tuh. Yeah. Oh, I bet he hates that. The doctor hates Twitter anyway. Ugh. What was. Where's it go? Okay, oh, so back. it goes right to your back. Yeah. Oh, yours too. God, I would not want that thing just crawling like around me. No humans. This is a perfect colony for humans, so where are where they? Where are all the colonists? That's some sort uh. of flavored algae. Uh oh, they're gonna be pissed. The whole place is waiting. We're just too early. So they're all still in bed. Hmm. Two portions. One portion. Is there going to be food sexism even in the future? Is this bloke utopia? It's probably reading these two people. The heartbeats. If you're going to travel 20 uh, light years, you're going to want to make sure. That's fascinating. They thought he's two people. You just send them up ahead and you leave them to it. Now he likes this place. Why one? Yeah. Does that mean you've got really high blood pressure? Really high. Duh. Yeah, but he has higher standards too. That's the thing. So this is like a, a hotel? Calcium based. Now. Gee. Oh, that's a bit of a shock. Calcium based. It's bone. This guy, robots want you to be happy, but they got the wrong end of the stick. I think we should give them what they want. Oh. Oh, uh, he has to smile. He's not great at it. Ah, yes. Two thumbs up. For Wiltshire slash Aberdeen. They're not convinced. 
get out of here. That place is a living death trap. We can't just leave it with its mouth wide open. But they're all dead. We yeah. saw them. It's too late. We have to assume. But the colonists. The colonists ship. Oh. Did she figure out that's why he does this? That's why he has the police box. Because I figured out why you keep your box as a phone box. I told you it's stuck. Advice and assistance obtainable immediately. You like that? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What's going on here? Uh huh. Doctor, why do people come here? Did something terrible happen? I can't hear you! Probably something terrible happened. I mean, I don't know. What she was looking at just looks like the modern 20th century. The people who came here, were they the lost people? Huh. Were they all lost though? Okay, that looks a little worse. Was evacuated. There were a number of ships. I bumped into a few of them over the years. Hmm. Right. Oh. Like, Starship UK and the Ark. Oh. Are we there yet? What? Who? I. Kid! The colonists are already here. This woman died. There's no sign of violence. So, you know, she just died the way that humans do. Right. Then a few more people died. Died of old age. Time. And then. A virus that went. Oh, viral? No. Nah, no. Grief! Grief as plague! How? Grief as a plague? Well, their job was to maintain happiness. So they expand the definition of happiness until. She dies. No one had ever died here before this lady. The Vardis, they've never heard of grief before. Yeah. They identified grief as the enemy of happiness and oh. everyone who was experiencing grief as a problem, as compost. And all those dead people, well, you know, they had friends and family too, so. Even more compost. And so oh. on and so on and so on. I would say that a lot of the colonists had friends or family who yeah. were here as shepherds. When they find out what happened, they'll be grief stricken. And there will After be that, a genocide. Jeez. The Vardy are not your enemy. They want to kill us. No, they want to help you. Killing you is just a side effect. Get out of my way. Well, come on, dude. Guns. Step away from the kid. They're not armed. But you don't need to do this. You just need to. What's wrong? What's going on? Where's my mom? Where's everyone? Uh, now they're armed. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I'm sure that helped. Fascinating. What's fascinating? The Vardy are identifying us under attack, which means they identify as a species. They are self-aware. They... They're alive. They're going to kill us. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have a secret move. I kick over the board. Duh. Here it comes. Wow. The fisherman said, I'd like my son to come home from the war and a hundred pieces of gold. The problem is, magic haddock, like robots, don't think like people. The fisherman's son came home from the war. Dead. In a coffin. I pressed the reset button. Oh. Every computer has one, and anyone can find it, especially if they happen to be scary, handsome genius from space. I reinitialized the entire command structure, retaining all programmed abilities but deleting the supplementary preference architecture. Oh, just a factory reset. I turned it off and on again. Duh. It's our city. Oh. They're our robots. They were. Yeah. Welcome to your new world. They've forgotten that you even made them in the first place. Now, since they have absolute like power season four. over this city, and since I'm assuming you all don't He doesn't remember, so they're tonight, redeemed. I have a suggestion for you. Smile. Smile. Hmm. You can't be serious, but I'm serious. Uh, but I'm willing to be a negotiator. Are you now? Yes. <laughs> you know what? 
I, I kind of don't blame this guy for being pissed. Hello. With a migratory conglomerate known as the human race. They're looking for a place to stay and they've got their eye on your city. Yeah. Would you like me to discuss rent? <laughs> rent. <laughs> That's funny. So, jumpstart a new civilization. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Yeah. You do this all the time. Do what? Fly around sorting things out like some kind of intergalactic policeman. <laughs> I don't sort things out. I'm definitely not a policeman. He's like a private eye. You live in a police box. It's pure coincidence. <laughs> Wasn't snowing when we left. Oh no. And this is the Thames. Um. Okay. That's a uh, very different London. Very different. Very different. But that's um. We'll figure that out. Don't worry. It's probably just another time. I wonder if this is going to be the entire season. Is them not going back? to Earth to face Nardole. I kinda hope so. That'd be hilarious, honestly. Alrighty, that's episode two. What a good episode, man. Very fascinating, very fascinating, you know? Like, it's... You know, at the end, you really can't blame the guy for being, like, pissed about everything. It's like, yeah, oh, these things, they, they killed our people and stuff. It's like, you really can't blame him on the other hand, yeah, he's not listening to what the doctor is saying, you know? The doctor is saying, like, yeah, they... It's not really why, you know, they killed... They didn't just kill your people to kill them, you know? Speaking of... Cast... Yeah, it is! That, that was Gita! I knew I recognized her! That was Gita from uh, the Sarah Jane Adventures... Um, yeah, Ronnie's mother. Oh, man. Oh, uh, that's cool. Even if it was just a cameo, that was really cool. It was cool seeing her. Um, alrighty, that... So, again, like, you can understand why this guy is pissed. And, yeah, when it's like, you know, they're attacking and then just suddenly it's over. And then he's just like, wait, these are our robots. We you know, built them, you know, they work for us, and now it's like, yeah, nope, none of that anymore. I mean, basically, it's either this, or you would have all been killed. So, you're kind of stuck with this. Neither of these options are the option that you wanted when you came here, but it's better than the other option. You know, this option's better than, you know, genocide. So... Yeah, that's, um, that's essentially what that boils down to is, eh, you just gotta kinda roll with it, so. Oh well. But it's interesting, you know, well first off, just a factory reset, basically. Like, that was really funny. That it's just a factory reset, so the Vardy have completely forgotten about the humans and everything, to them, they are just like, oh, we exist. This this city, well, it's made of us, so I guess it's ours. Oh, who are you? Oh, you want to live here? Sure, we can work with that. We can uh, figure that out. You know, that's basically what's happened with the Vardy, you know? It does, I mean, it's kind of interesting, you know, when he says like, oh, well, you know, they killed our people. And the doctor's like, yeah, well, they don't remember doing that, you know? Which, you know, you could think, like, well, does that mean that... Does that sort of leave the possibility open that they could do it again? Like, are they going to sort of get to that point again where they do start killing people? Well, that depends on what happens, you know? Because the thing is that the reason they got there was because of the programming they had. You know, it's it's the whole HAL 9000 thing, you know? It's like, you know... Where there, it's like, oh, well, the mission, you know, the, you gotta complete the mission no matter the cost. Well, some of the cost for HAL 9000 was... A, slight spoilers, which is hilarious because I've actually never seen 2001, but I know of it. But, um, but it's like, yeah, you know, even though... 
It's like it has to complete its mission, even if that means harming the crew. It's sort of the same thing here. You know, their job was to keep people happy. And when they saw grief and they needed to like, okay, we need to eliminate grief. How do we do that? We kill the people that are grieving. That was really just their programming. They don't have that programming anymore. Now they're just new life forms. They, all they know is we exist. This is our city because it's built of us. And here are some humans that also want to live here. That's basically all they know. So it's one of those things where it's like, okay, yeah, they lost their memory. So are they redeemed for what they did? Kinda. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like, yeah, it's this honestly. Okay. What it basically results in is I, I think for the guy, you know, it, for him, it was more that, you know, what was his name? By the way, I can't just call him the guy. I swear it was like Ted or something. Um, steadfast. Okay, that's not Ted. Okay, I thought it was. I thought it was like Ted, but no, his name is Steadfast. Okay. Anyway, you know, normally when I, <laughs> normally when I like make up names, like, uh, and I've done this. the The most recent one I can think of is on like Doctor Who Classic when. Like, I, I, I kind of make a joke of, like, the Daleks sort of trash-talking each other. And they're just like, you know, maybe if you didn't walk right into it, Bill. But Bill doesn't work anymore because now we have Bill. Bill Potts. So, that's hilarious. So, yeah, it's like I'm trying, like, the next, like, generic name I can think of is, like, Ted. So, that's what I came up with. But, no, his name is Steadfast. But I also noticed, like, wasn't the kid was named Praiseworthy and Guido was, like, Good Thing? It's like, what the hell kind of names are these, you know? It's like, geez, I, I, you know what? I long for the simplicity of Bill, you know? It's also interesting that my two generic names are Bill and Ted. Huh, I didn't even think about that. Wow, isn't that hilarious? Anyway. But yeah, for Steadfast, it's like, you know... He's thinking, like, oh, this is, you know, murder. They wanted to commit genocide and stuff. But, honestly, with what the Doctor says, basically, the Doctor and Bill are basically saying that this isn't murder, this was just a tragedy, basically. This was a misunderstanding that became a tragedy. But you can sort of move on from that. It's not exactly a murder, you know? It's like... It's like if the brakes go out on someone's car and they, you know, slam right into a tree and die. That's not necessarily anyone's fault. Like, you don't, like, okay, maybe you'd be like, oh, well, you know, it's because the brakes went out. Like, yeah, that's why. But you don't really immediately be like, oh, well, the dealership screwed up. It's like, well, no, the brakes went out because something developed in the car later. You know, like something, to, a problem developed later and then it just wasn't fixed, you know, and now it's basically like, okay, you know what, you know what it is now, now instead of just, you know, the brakes going out and dying to like hitting a tree, basically, now it's the brakes were starting to go out and maybe you hit something, but you didn't total it. No one died. Maybe you get minor injuries. And now the doctor has come in and, you know, basically fixed the brakes, you know, them's the brakes. The doctor basically comes in and fixes the brakes and you can't be, you can't just sit here and be like, oh, well, those brakes, they were clearly trying to kill us. Like, well, no, there was just a problem and now it has been fixed. Are you going to blame the brakes now? Like, yeah, there was, there was a problem you know, it did result in something bad, but now it's sort of over. And yeah, you can still harbor feelings, you know, negative feelings for the brakes that, you know, were pretty faulty on your car, but you can't do it anymore, basically. Does this allegory make any sense, this comparison? Does, this, does it make any sense what I'm talking about? I hope so. I'm really trying. I'm really trying to figure something out here, so... Granted, you've all seen the episode, you probably already get it, and you don't need my dumb break analogy. 
Analogy is it an analogy, not allegory. Yeah, analogy. That's it. Okay. So yeah. Um Yeah, I guess that's basically what I'm trying to get at. So, uh to kind of go into the rest of the notes, uh first off, that opening scene was hilarious uh with uh just Bill and the doctor on the TARDIS talking about stuff. I I really did like that. I like how, you know, it's like you know, it's like, "Oh, well, the TARDIS doesn't need a steering wheel. See, what you do is you choose a location, and then the TARDIS chooses a location, and then you sort of negotiate with the TARDIS where you're going to land. That is perfect. That is absolutely perfect way to describe how to fly the TARDIS. You really have to negotiate with her. And, you know, yeah, the Doctor can go to many places. He can even, you know, enslave the TARDIS to you know, a specific place like, uh, like in, uh, listen, but it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, it's really just negotiating with the TARDIS. The doctor can go anywhere he wants so long as the TARDIS approves, basically. So I like that. Um, we didn't really have Nardal in this episode, which I'm all right with because again, I don't really, he's there and now he's not even there, you know, but I did like the joke of, you know, uh, him sort of being strict with the doctor and being like, you know, you said that you cannot leave the earth unless it's an emergency, you know? And so it's like, so the doctor's basically saying like, okay, well, you know, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to pop back up to my office. Don't worry. And then, you know, Nardo gets out of there, closes the door and, and it's like, yeah, we're leaving right now. He's not going to notice because this is a time and space machine. We can get back to exactly the moment we left, you know? So I like that, that it's like, yeah, and, you know, Nardole's being very strict about it, but the doctor just does not care. So that was interesting. Again, you know, we got, uh, we got, uh, talk about the vault. Don't know what's in that vault. Don't know, but we'll have to figure it out sometime. <sighs> Uh, excuse me. So, yeah, hopefully we'll figure out what what's in the vault. I'm very curious to find out, so. Let's see. Uh, smile, emojis. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, I thought that was pretty funny that it was uh, emojis for, you know, the communication of the future and stuff. Uh, so I thought that was pretty funny. Um, and then, yeah, just, you know, smile. Just keep smiling, you know? That, I mean, it's pretty crazy. It's it's pretty crazy, like, this idea. It's like, keep smiling or they will kill you. And it's like, oh, jeez. So, yeah. Um, let's see. The colony was pretty interesting. So, I did like that idea that it's like, okay, this is a colony. At first, I was kind of getting confused. I was like, wait, is this like a hotel or something? But no, it's a colony that was set up ahead of time, uh, which is interesting. It was set up ahead of time in order to, uh, you know, accommodate all these colonists. Granted, it's, you know, they were saying like, oh, well, it was set up and the colonists will be here someday, you know? But that's not actually what happened. The colonists were already there, but they were in cryosleep waiting until the colony was completely prepared. So it, it is sort of, you know, that but not that, basically. So, I like that. I also like when, um, you know, it's like, okay, here's the here's the food, this blue jello stuff. Um, and it's like, you know, Bill gets one cube and the doctor gets two. And, and it's like, well, wait, why why does he get two? And, it's, and I like her even saying, it's like, what, is there sexism in the future too? You know, and it's like, no, I, I like the idea that it registers both of his hearts as two different people. Which is honestly, yeah, that's very true, because the, the human race, I mean, granted, by this time, you would think the humans would have met other aliens and stuff, but yeah, they would generally just register, at least in the programming for the Vardy, they would have, I am saying that right, by the way, yes, I uh, am I? I hope so. The Vardy, Vard, Vardies, yes, I got it, okay. So, uh... But the programming for the Vardis would be to scan for humans. And so their, you know, definition of human is just one heart. 
So the doctor walks in with two hearts, and so they think he's two people, and he and they put down. Even though they only put it on one plate, they do put it for two people. So I thought that was really funny. Um, I wonder what that tastes like. You know, just this cube of jello. And, and that was the other thing, too. It's like, okay, here's a little cube of jello. It's like, you know, I, I, I look, it's jello. Honestly, you could just pick it up and, like, down it without even, like, chewing. You know, it's jello. You can slurp it down, like, easily. But meanwhile, Bill, she gets this little cube of jello. She gets the fork and the knife and she starts cutting into it. It's like, well, you don't need to do that, Bill. You can just eat it in one go. So, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of funny, too. That it's like, here's... The entire meal is just this one little cube of jello, and they and you still have to use, like, a fork and a knife for it. So, I don't know. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but, yeah, I wonder what that tastes like. Like, does it taste like specific foods? Like, do you want, like... Could I, like... Could I get something that, like, tastes like a pizza? But, oh, but would that be weird? Like, like if you got a little cube and it's you know a cube of Jello and it feels like Jello, but then you taste like a pepperoni pizza. Is that weird? I don't know. Oh man. Uh, let's see. Uh, I wrote down not escape, and this also ties into the helpline, which I thought was very clever. That um, that yeah, like you know they go back to the TARDIS so that. Uh, Bill will be safe in the TARDIS, you know, the TARDIS is away from the city, and it's the TARDIS, she'll be safe in there, you know, and the doctor is going back in, and, you know, at first it's like, okay, well, yeah, you know, they got back to the TARDIS, like, well, okay, I guess we're done, you know, it's like, like, but obviously they, they can't just be done, you know, the episode's still going, so what are we doing here, um, but yeah, I like, you know, when the doctor says, because sometimes it's, you know, just his general curiosity. He's just like, oh, I gotta figure out how it works and stuff. And so he runs back into danger. Oh, excuse me. But instead, I like that, um, that it's like, no, he has to go back because at least at the time he was under the assumption that the colonists are going to be, you know, landing here soon and they're going to be completely taken out, you know? So he had to go and prevent that. And I like all the talk of, you know, him sort of being the you know, space police, basically, you know, he goes from place to place, and he solves problems, you know, which, yeah, you know, as much as the doctor can try to deny it, that is honestly what he does, you know, he's just, like, not, I guess, official about it, I don't know, but that's what he does, he goes from place to place, and he helps people, so, um, but it's interesting that he sort of tries to deny that, even, you know, his line of, like, no, I don't, I don't go to a place and help people, I, happen to be passing by and then i somehow get involved like the you know it, it kind of reminds me of uh another actually it reminds me of the other episode where uh there were um where there was like you know humans that have escaped earth uh the beast below where you know the 11th doctor is telling amy it's like you know my number one rule is i never get involved it's like bull crap you never get involved don't even give me your garbage, Doctor. You you always get involved. But I guess that's sort of the remnants of... Uh, the remnants of when he first started, where it's like, he didn't want to get involved. He does get involved sometimes, but I'm thinking of, like, uh, just recently on Doctor Who Classic, we watched uh, The Massacre of St. Bartholomew's Eve, where, you know, the Doctor wasn't getting involved really steven was getting involved but um the doctor didn't want to get involved and he specifically you know says like i cannot change history if all these people die in the massacre then they die i cannot change the course of history and that sort of drove steven away but yeah it's like i think that's what the doctor you know like even after all this time the doctor sort of still holds on to that like no i'm tr i don't want to get involved in things you know, I'm not, you know, this policeman who goes around and helps and stuff, but it's just that I happen to get involved when that's just a complete lie. Basically, like, the doctor is lying to himself about that. So, yeah. Um, so I like that. Uh, let's see. Again, Leave Earth, uh, you know, it sort of reminds me of The Beast Below. Although, in The Beast Below, they said that that was because of the destruction of Earth, wasn't it? You know, it was... I think it was more that, whereas this 
was more like, oh, well, you know, the humans were basically tearing each other apart. And, you know, there was all this war and stuff that uh, multiple ships left the Earth, basically, to start over. Uh, and I like his line of saying, like, yeah, I've met a few of them before. Uh, which, you know, can be a reference, possibly, I guess, to The Beast Below. Also, uh, the latest episode that we watched on Doctor Who Classic was The Ark, where, yeah, the Doctor, uh, the Doctor, Stephen, and Dodo all met up with uh, this, you know, whole thing, this whole ship of people that were watching over, you know, the human race that were in, like, you know, this sort of uh, suspended animation. So it is a lot like this. So I like that. That was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, of course in here, they were all in cryo sleep, but in the arc, they were all miniaturized. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, that was pretty interesting. And again, you're leaving earth and, and okay. What does this say about, what does this say about our world when you know, Bill is going through, like, the history of the world in this book, and she sees, like, all these images and stuff, and when she starts to get, like, like, oh, these, like, you know, wars that happened in, like, the modern age, like, look at all these wars and stuff, and I'm just sitting here, like, yeah, oh, that was what drove the people away? Oh, I thought that was, like, last week. Like, what does that say when I'm just sort of sitting here, like, yeah, you know, that happens, it sucks, but it happens, and I'm like, oh, wait, that's what's supposed to be the reason why, you know, humans have left the Earth. Like, ooh, okay then. Um, so, yeah, that that was um, unfortunate, let's say. So, yeah. Um, I like the explanation, so I couldn't... It took a little while for them to sort of get around to the actual explanation, you know? But, um, but I like this idea that it's like, okay... So, you know, the Vardy were programmed to, you know, make the humans happy, you know, satisfaction, which is why they had uh, the badges. But then when people were, you know, starting to grieve for, you know, this first, uh, the first person that died, the Vardy were like, okay, grief, that's not happiness. So we need to eliminate it. And they decided in the most robotic way, like, well, how do we eliminate grief? We destroy the thing that has it. So they were killing the people. Unfortunately, that caused more grief. And then this whole massacre started, basically. Um, which is very creative. Uh, very clever, actually. You know, it's like... It, it honestly is very HAL 9000. It's like, yeah, it, they were just doing what they were programmed to do. So I like that. Um, and then, you know, it's an interesting solution, too. Because I'm sitting here, you know, for all, the longest time. Like, okay, yeah, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And it's like... You know, the doctor being like, oh, well, you know, if I sound confident, they think, they'll think that I have a plan, but I don't. Until eventually he realized, like, oh, so they have sort of their own sort of sentience, you know? They have sort of become this new life form. And he's like, okay, how about I just do a factory reset? And he does. He does a factory reset. So they retain their sort of sentience and they know that they are living creatures, but they just forget everything, you know, pretty much all the programming they got from the humans. So they're just like, oh, we, we are life forms. This is our place. And these humans want to crash here. Okay, well, we can work with that. And I like the joke about, uh, you know, it's like, shall we, you know, go over rent? And then just the Euro signs uh, pop up in their eyes. I thought that was really funny. So, yeah, that was it, it was an interesting solution. And again, you can understand sort of the frustration with Steadfast. Um, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's you just sort of have to move on, you know, it's, it's, it's a very weird thing, you know, where it's like, yeah, you just sort of have to move on from this, you know, it sucks, but, uh, live with it, I guess. Eh, yeah. So, um, and then at the end, uh, we are in London and there's an elephant and it's snowy, foggy. It's, uh, it's not good. It's not good. And that will be, uh, that will be next episode, which is pretty cool. Um, so again, I'm kind of wondering if this will sort of be the thing of uh, the Doctor and Bill sort of going everywhere but back to his uh, office and just avoiding Nardole. That maybe, at least maybe for an episode or two, that'd be kind of funny. So yeah. Um, so yeah, 
that's pretty much it. Really did love this episode. Uh, I thought this was really, really interesting, and I'm very curious to see where we are going next time. So, with all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my Doctor Who reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. See you guys later.